Okay. Um, so this is what we did. We loaded a piece of urea sandstone and with an axial force F and we measure that as you increase the displacement delta X the force is going to look something like this it's going to at the beginning increase slowly then it's going to increase steeply and then at the point it will reach a maximum I want you to process this data and we can do it now to tell me what is the strain and here what is the stress and do the same plot and probably between 50 and 100 I like that you tell me in that region, what is the Young modulus? The Young modulus is going to be, if this is equal to one, it's going to be the Young modulus. Young modulus is going to be the variation of axial stress divided the variation of axial strain. And as a reminder, I was telling you that we use a sample with a diameter of Point thirty-eight inches. I guess that's what I said. The length was point eight inches, and something that you need here is that <coughs> one third of the crank is equal to point fifteen millimeters. Okay. So, between 10 and 100 kilograms, tell me what is the Young modulus. I'm going to give extra points to the first one that tells me that. You can compute this in uh, metric units or in uh, or in field units. English units is going to be the same. Let me convert this to inches to help you a little bit. Well, you work on that, I want to work on something else. I want to compute the strength of the rock, okay? But you compute the young modules. What's going to be the area of the, of the sample? Yeah, I got one more, three. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No, but you're not divided by four. Yeah, it's point one one. okay, thanks.
So, uh, with this experiment, I guess that the peak stress was 2,760 pounds per square inch. Okay, don't worry now about the peak stress. That's something we're gonna see uh, not next week, but the week after. Um, but that's gonna be an important now. So what do you, did somebody get the value of the young modules? How much? 12,926. How, so how many PSI? 12,000 12, PSI? 12,000 PSI, that sounds a little bit small. Please, please, please check. check your number. If somebody gets something else, let me know. The, I believe the answer should be more or less about a million psi or less, or between 0.1 million psi and 1 million psi. How much? 94,000? Uh, could be, okay. So, let's see. This is your answer? Yeah. Mr. Amir. Amir, Amir. A M E R. Last name? Hashim. I know, I know, I know. I would be right, Amir. <laughs> <laughs> Last name. Say, na say again? Hashim. Start with H? Yeah. Okay. So Mr. H says, that <laughs> okay. um, tell me you get another number or you get something something similar to that. I think that, that's a reasonable number. Yes? I got it in Newtons. Uh, well, in MPA, convert it to MPA. It, it can be Newton. It should be either Pascal or, or MPA. <coughs> Anyone else got the number? You're gonna have to do something very similar in the homework and also in, in, the, in the lab. The first lab is next. Oh yeah, very important. The first lab is next week, okay? So so remember to, to come here at the time that you should uh, show up. And you're gonna you're gonna do this test uh, but uh, with bigger samples, like samples like like this one, one inch. Yes. Do we need to wear pants and like close-up shoes? Oh yes, very important. You have to use long pants and close-up shoes. If you don't do that, you will not be allowed to to be in there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, do we have any other value for the young modules? You, you, the rest of the class gets the same. I got two sixty-two thousand. I could be wrong. 262,000 PSI? Yeah. And you are Mr. K. Mr. K. Okay. Sure I got 8.93 into the 4 megapascals. 8.9 10 to the 4? Yeah. That's too high. That's too high. <laughs> Um, looks like we have very different values. Uh, you have an answer? I also got around 260,000. Uh, okay. And your name is? Miller. Mr. Miller. Okay, so uh, you're Mr. Barrera, right? So uh, this, sounds, this number looks very reasonable to me. This one is, is, uh, is too big 
uh, not not impossible, but it's too big. And this one could be too, but uh, uh, I I don't have the table. But I'm, I'm gonna. Can, can you tell me, guys, what we did? I'm gonna check it on my own. So 10 kilograms was zero, right? And then we had 50 kilograms was 125? 175. 175. And 100? 125. And then we have 138 kilograms. And then it broke, right? Okay. Can you scoot the page up? Uh, yes. Okay, um, let me see if I have something else important to say right now uh, or I could compute that. Yeah, that's what really? Well, um, I'd like to explain a little bit uh, why you have this shape. And uh, why it looks like that and why you should get the young modules here. Uh, usually, you're going to see in the laboratory that these curves of strain and stress uh, I'm exaggerating it here, okay? But when we apply stress to a rock, you should make sure in the lab that the end phases of your rock are very parallel. If they are not, uh, you're gonna have, the rock is gonna break uh, more easily here, and that's also going to give you a false curve that's going to start very flat, and then it's going to pick up, like that. Also, the reason for having this region in which uh, it looks softer than it is, is because uh, we said, end effects, and sometimes in the rock you may also have small fractures that you can't see, but as you load them, they close, and once they close, and you reach the stress that this rock will be expected to be in situ conditions or reservoir conditions, that's when you want to measure your young modules. After some time of linearity, the rock will also start to get softer and it will eventually break. You're gonna see this much more clearly when you see it in the lab. And at that point is the point in which uh, you reach the peak stress, and at that point, uh, you have rock failure. And as, as we saw in that sample, uh, usually uh, rock failure is gonna produce a crack in the rock, sometimes it goes like an angle, sometimes it goes more straight, in which that's the maximum stress at which you can put the rock. And usually before you get to that, also the rocks get a little bit softer. But the young module, you should uh, measure it in this uh, region of uh, linearity. Okay? Uh, so, on... Uh, Friday we're gonna work on the on this week assignment. Uh, you can start looking at it. It is right here. It's just going to be questions one and two, okay? And um, here there is a, a file that you're gonna have to download and you're gonna have to work with to measure both young modules and Poisson ratio on a organic grid. Alright guys, see you on Friday.